Welcome to module 23 of object oriented analysis and design. We have already in the last two modules taken a look at the basic premises of UML, the unified modeling language. We have discussed very briefly though the stages of software development life cycle and related both of them together. Now, from this module onwards and uh, this journey will continue for several modules to come, we will start discussing and explaining about different specific UML diagrams. So, in this module we will start the discussion on use case diagram and we will continue that in the next module as well. So, in terms of our discussion, we will discuss use case diagrams and specifically actors and use cases. The outline would be available on your left always. So, just to remind what are the use cases is the integration of business knowledge with the development specification is a requirement. That is the, that is our basic starting point. So, that is how we got the two pages on the leaf management system, where the organization decided to have a system of LMS and they put it down integrated the business knowledge, which is how they how the employees report, how the employees apply for leave, what different kinds of leave they have and so on and created this requirement. Now, we still do not know who will interact with these modules and for what purpose what the user will do with this, these are still not clear. Certainly, these are not so well specified. In fact, the LMS specification is actually not that bad, because if you go back to the specification, you will find the use of the word use case, but usually you will not even get that. So, the use case diagram depicts a human interaction with the system that is this is my system that I am trying to build, this is my system and finally, why am I building the system, because there is some human who wants to interact with this system, give input, take output and so on. And this is this human is not a not a single individual, this human could be a various different groups of users who would use and different parts of the system for different purposes. Certainly, in any reasonable system, no two user would be using the system exactly in the same way or maybe at least uh, uh, there would be variety of groups, which will use the system in multiple different ways. And the different ways in which the system can be used is the main premise of the use case diagram. So, it is a behavioral diagram as we have already said and it is used to define a set of actions, use case which is means it is a particular case of use or case of action that we are interested to look at. And who takes that action? If there is an action, who will take that action? That action will be taken by the actor. So, use case diagrams are mainly used to gather requirements of the system and identify internal and external factors. Now, before wasting more time, let us get into the actual details. A use case diagram is composed of three major components, the actors, the use cases and the relationships. In simple terms, the actor is a user in a simplistic term, the actor is a user who wants to do something with the system. Use case is an action, is an activity or is a way that the user would like to use the system. And finally, relationship is no action that the user would want to execute would be all realizable alone by itself. Different activities have different dependence. If I want to take leave, then it depends on what is my availability of leave, what is the uh, validity constraints on the leave, what is uh, the opinion of my reporting manager and so on. 
So, the relationship is the most important to understand what how the actions will interact. So, the UML diagrams gives various different notations and semantics for defining these components. First, the actor. As already explained, actors interface with the system. Actor, though the name sounds that as if actor is a human being, but UML considers actors who are people or human beings or actors who are other systems. That is, I can get a request from a human being sitting on the terminal working through a GUI or I can get an input, I can get a request for service from some other system also. Actors could be non-human. These are typically shown in terms of or typically shown in terms of stick diagram figures like this or they could be labeled by Gulli mats also. I mean instead of uh, the figure I could just uh, put Gulli mat is this pair of symbols. I could put a name within that and that means an actor. There could be variety of different actors or, or rather the actors can be classified in multiple different ways. For example, the first classification I have already talked of an actor could be human or non-human. An actor could be primary or secondary. The primary user is a kind of who is a targeted end user of the system. So, in the leave management system an employee or an executive is a primary user and the secondary user is uh, someone who is required for the correct functionality of the system. So, system administrator who has to make sure that proper leaves are credited, the leave records are reconciled and all that is considered to be a secondary user. Then users could be active or passive, active uh, users are those who initiate a use case and passive users are those who are recipient of the use cases. So, an active user starts applying for a leave, a passive user is like a uh, actor is like a printer who based on a request to print a report would actually print the report. So, the question again is uh, how can we identify the actors? So, who uses the essential use cases, who needs the uh, system support, who is responsible for system administration, what are the external devices, software systems to communicate with, who are interested in the results of the system and so on. These are the different questions you could keep on asking and answers to those will give you the actors and extending on our earlier um, uh, approach of analysis to identify objects and classes, I could uh, easily conclude that certainly an actor will be one who is an identifiable class, identifiable object. So, if we refer back to our linguistic analysis of nouns that could give us some good clue in terms of what uh, the actors could be. So, we look in here all around and try to find out you know nouns like employee, manager, lead, sysadmin and so on, which could initiate some action in the system. The employee initiates a request, lead initiates an approval process or a revocation process sys admin initiates the leave crediting process and so on. So, you can very well understand that uh, there is there is no very standard mechanism for identifying actors, but again the linguistic analysis of noun will give you some good clue and then clubbed with that if you do some uh, you know action analysis based on the verbs, you would be able to get a better confidence as to what who are the people who would need to act on the system and must be actors in the UML diagram. So, this is the LMS example which I have already discussed. So, these are the two different ways. So, typ typ typically you use uh, this kind of a icon when you know that the actor is a human and use this kind of an icon when you know that the actor is a non-human. So, these are the actors uh, in the LMS system that you can easily see. 
Now, the next component of use case diagram and certainly the most important component is the use case itself. That is, the use case represents what the actor want the system to do, the required action. So, if an executive is an actor, the executive wants to apply for leave. The lead needs to review and accept approve a leave. So, these are what the actors want the system to do. So, we just do not end by identifying that this action is required, but we say that a use case has to give us a complete picture, complete course of events. For example, if, if an executive is applying for a leave, then it is just not applying for the leave, a whole course of actions have to happen. You have to must have a reason for that leave, must have enough account balance for that leave, uh, it must block those uh, dates, it must calculate how many days it turns out to be, it may have salary implications and so on. So, that complete course of actions form the use case for a particular action. In addition use cases that they are uh, graphical diagrams as you are saying, but they could have some attached notes, short notes. Uh, to describe what the use case is talking about or what the conditions and so on. You would, um, uh, I would like to remind you at this stage that uh, use case is a diagram to be used at the very beginning of the whole activity. So, you are using use case at the requirements phase. So, when you are working on the use case, you do not have any of the other UML diagrams possibly at hand. So, all that you are relying on is your classical natural language. Uh, descriptions and discussions and so on. So, in one step you may not be able to put everything very concretely in terms of the required graphical notation of the UML. So, you may still need to have some further details, even some, some details may not be representable in a use case diagram. So, those are the things that you keep putting down in terms of the notes and attach them with different parts of the use case diagram. To identify use cases, um, uh, again I would uh, refer you back to the linguistic analysis of verbs and we can see that uh, an employee needs to approve or uh, I mean a lead or manager needs to approve a leave, regret a leave or revoke a leave, an employee can cancel a leave and so on, can avail a leave. So, these are different actions that are expected in the system and therefore, they will very legitimately qualify as candidates to be considered for different use cases. So, very explicitly these are some of the request leave, daily attendance are some of the use cases. A use case is typically drawn in a kind of a oval shape and with the use case name written here. So, this is the shape and this is the name of the use case. So, this is the minimum that a use case must have. It may have other uh, annotations, other uh, ornament, uh, ornamentations along with it, but it must at least basic have a closed uh, oval elliptic shape and a name to being identified as a use case. So, remember uh, uh, I have started saying that UML is grossly a graphical language. So, everything, every concept, every primitive we talk of, there is a iconic representation for that. So, along with uh, certain textual annotations, it is primarily these iconic primitives, which will tell us what is exactly being represented and going on in the system. Now, a use case uh, may be uh, specified in the, in the following manner, that is, uh, this is kind of a a possible way that uh, you can specify a use case. So, again uh, we are at a very early stage of design. So, we still do not have much of the details codified in the UML diagrams. So, in terms of a use case at least the first thing naturally is obviously required the name of the use case you must give it a name. It is good that in the notes if you can put what is the purpose of this use case. So, that will clarify as to why this use case is important or how this use case could later stage 
be found to relate to other use cases and so on. The next one is very important is it says that many of the use cases have a precondition that you can do something provided certain conditions have met in the system. Of course, uh, in terms of the system there is a very trivial precondition that the login and password signing in is required to enter the system, but you can get a whole lot of uh, preconditions in the LMS uh, system that uh, for example, to be able to avail of uh, a sick leave uh, for the basic approval for the or for the application I do not need a certificate, but when it is to be finally reconciled I need a certificate. So, this reconciliation needs as a precondition of a certificate. The post condition is what happens when a request has been entered, uh, I am I'm sorry, when a use case has actually executed, has performed and after that what has to happen. For example, uh, you have applied uh, for leave, the leave is approved, once the leave is approved, it has to get temporarily locked in your system to show that you have less number of leaves now. Now, when you avail on the termination of avail of the leave, it must get actually deducted from your leave. So, the post condition of having availed is that the your leave permanently go down by the number of days that you have taken leave, but the post condition of approval is it is provisionally locked to a lower number by the number of leave days that you have been that you have got approved. Because at this stage at the approved stage if the leave is revoked uh, by your approving manager or you decide to cancel the leave then it will again the post condition would be that uh, it should get unlocked and go back should get credited back to your leave records. Often it is a good idea to also document in the specification that the failure condition, what happens if the precondition is not satisfied or if the use case fails to execute successfully. So, what should be the, what should happen in those cases must also be documented. For example, a user has, uh, an employee has tried to apply for a leave. Uh, the balance uh, in the account of the employee satisfied, but uh, in terms of the clubability condition the leave was not a valid one. Two leaves were being asked for together juxtaposed together which are not which cannot be taken together. So, in that failure condition we need to specify as to what happens to the apply leave use case. Trivial to say that uh, actors need to be identified as to who all possibly can uh, uh, work with this use case and often people would also like to put a optimistic flow. An optimistic flow is not uh, a fixed flow, I mean it is not that it, this is what will happen, but it is kind of we are designing the system, we are designing the system with a purpose. So, the optimistic flow say that if everything else go right, then this is what uh, we would want the use case to do. So, these are some of the possible optimistic flow for the request leave use case we are looking at. So, it is often good to uh, document the optimistic flow, because uh, when it later on this use case will go to the analysis phase, the design phase and final uh, and finally, the you know low level design will get detailed out. It will help the designer to understand that this is typically what uh, the system will be used for. So, the designer at this stage could make recommendations to the test system later on that uh, put a lot of emphasis on these cases, because these are the cases in which the user would uh, normally use and test the system. Whereas, failure conditions are important to also design tests to decide as to if the system will work in the corner situations. So, these are the typical, um, uh, this is a typical structure of a specification of the use case. It is not necessary that uh, all of these, of course, the name is necessary, but uh, many of these may be missing in a specification, but certainly as much of 
that can be put in the specification of the use case would certainly help. So, to summarize on this uh, module, we have started discussing the first UML diagram, the use case diagram, which we know is to be used for the requirement specification stage of the um, SDLC process. And uh, in the use case diagram, we have talked about the two primary components of actor and use cases. In the following module, we will continue our discussion on the use case diagram and talk about the relationships that exist between different use cases.